Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So today we'll see one more concept in computer organization that is interrupt cycle. So in our previous session, we have discussed about the instruction cycle. So what are the phases involved in the execution of a single instruction? So we, say we have seen the phases like fetching, decoding, reading the address and execution, right? So the chat will be start and from the start, the next step or next phase is fetch and decode the instruction instruction and similarly after that simply execute execute the instruction okay so this is the process and after execute execution simply it may go go to the halt halt means the execution will be stopped that means if the Control executes the last instruction, then it will be hard, and otherwise it will fetch the next instruction. It will go to the next instruction. So this is the instruction cycle. This is the instruction cycle. So here there might be a chance of getting the interrupts. Now, what is an interrupt? What is an interrupt? So interrupt is a signal signal or we can call it as a event occurs from software or hardware which stops the current execution which stops current execution okay so that's why we we are calling it as a interrupt so it will interrupt the normal process of execution right so here there is no chance of interrupts so this instruction cycle is also called as instruction cycle with interrupt disable interrupt or interrupts disable so there will be no interrupts there will be no interrupts and now we, we can also reconstruct this instruction cycle by enabling the interrupts. So what we have to do if there are some interrupts uh, through the software or hardware, right? So a small change here you can do the start and afterwards fetch and decode, fetch and decode the instruction. So I'm not writing the instruction, right? So simply I'm writing it as a fetch and decode and then execute execute instruction. So this is a life cycle which enables the interrupts. So here interrupt enable and here interrupt service or interrupt process. Okay interrupt process and here if it is a last instruction we can say it as a hard okay and this is interrupt enable interrupt enable okay interrupt enable and here you can go with a fit so if there is no interrupt so if here you can write it as yes and if it is no no interrupt no interrupt it will fetch the next instruction if it interrupt then that interrupt will be processed and immediately after again it will go with the see again it will fetch the next instruction right so here also we can say it as execution fetch here also we can call it as a execution or fetch so this is the interrupt cycle so this is the instruction cycle disabling the interrupts instruction cycle enabling the interrupts so there is a one more field called interrupt service which will handle all the interrupts during the execution of any instruction 
right so this interrupt will be having the highest priority so which will stop the current execution of the iteration the instruction and it will start uh, processing the interrupt so these interrupts will be processed by interrupt service routine so all the interrupts will be maintained by the interrupt service routine which is a, also a signal and usually we call it as isr interrupt service routine and all the interrupts will be available here and from one by one the interrupts will be processed okay so how it will be done so if one instruction is being executed okay one instruction is being executed and if any interrupt occurs then what happens right now we will see that so here hardware and software interrupts different categories of interrupts will be there right hardware interrupts and software interrupts so the name itself indicates hardware interrupts hardware interrupts and these are generated generated through hardware external devices okay through external devices mouse or keyboard etc etc right external devices and coming to the software interrupts so these are generated through internal system software okay through internal os through internal operating system so through the operating system or through any process some sort of interrupts will be generated and then uh, those interrupts we call it as a software interrupts and these software interrupts will be having the highest priority so high priority than the hardware interrupts so software interrupts will be having the highest priority than the hardware interrupts so these are having a low priority so so even the interrupts will also be having the priorities right so among that highest priority interrupts will be processed first so that we'll see one once again so first let us see what happens if interrupt occurs during the execution of instruction right so let it be a program this is a program so we know that program is a set of instructions so i'll write it as i1 i2 i3 i4 where i stands for instruction right let it be instruction so one by one the instructions will be being executed so uh, in our previous session we have already seen the complete instruction cycle right so during that if i2 while executing the i2 if any interrupt occurs then immediately immediately okay the steps step 1 okay it save the current execution so first it stops the current execution it stops the current execution or instruction execution okay next step 2 stores the address of current instruction in temporary location in temporary location and then step 3 control starts processing of interrupt which occurred interrupt occurred or interrupt triggered and then step 4 once the interrupt processing has been completed so i'll write step 4 here here so don't get confused i am writing step 4 here 
So the first stops the current instruction execution and second stores the address of current instruction in the temporary location. Step 3 control starts processing of interrupt occurred. So whatever the interrupt occurred that will be get started. So that will be handled by the interrupt handler. Okay. And step 4. So restores the current instruction execution after processing after completion of processing interrupt so after completion of processing the interrupt then immediately it restores or resumes the current instruction execution so it will get the address from this particular temporary location and again it will resume the current iteration execution okay right so once the complete uh, interrupts have been processed then it fetches to the next iteration right for example here you can see first instruction has been executed perfectly without any interrupts and for example if any interrupt occurs while executing the instruction 2 then immediately it saves the address in temporary location and the control moves towards the interrupt handler so interrupt handler will handle the instruction right interrupt sorry interrupt so this is an interrupt so once it was completed then immediately it will come back here and it will process the execution so here right the control will go towards the interrupt and it will come back to the here and immediately whenever the instruction i4 the fourth instruction is being executed again if any interrupt occurs again the control will move with the next in next i mean the interrupt let it be interrupt one and interrupt two so it start executing the interrupt processing the interrupt and after completion of this, again the control will come back and it will resume the current execution of instruction. So this is ha this happens while executing the interrupts. Okay, and as I said that in between these interrupts, the priority will be there. So here also we'll be having the highest priority interrupts and the low priority interrupts. So always the high priority interrupts will be executed first or processed first. For example, for example, I erase this one. So if by executing the instruction I2, if there is any interrupt, automatically the address will be stored in some temporary location and it will the control will start to the interrupt one. And it will start processing that particular interrupt and during the processing of this interrupt one if there are if there is any, if there is any chance of getting any other interrupt which is having the high priority again the same process will be done so it will move to the higher priority interrupt and it will start executing the higher priority interrupt so high priority interrupt so this particular interrupt will be halted right and that will be executed immediately after that again it will come back to the position so here also the interrupts will be having the priority so always the highest priority interrupt will be executed first than the low priority interrupt and in here usually the interrupts will be represented as r the signal r the signal r so the interrupts may be from input and output. So here we'll be having the indication FGI is a input flag or input flip-flop. We can say it as an input flag or input flip-flop. Similarly, FGO, which is called as an output flag or output flip-flop. So whatever it may be, if the interrupt occurs through the input or output 
immediately the in, interrupt handler will handle the interrupts and it will process the interrupts and then only the next inter instruction will be get fetched so that's why here this is an inst uh, instruction cycle okay this is an instruction cycle disabling the interrupts and previously we have drawn that the instruction cycle enabling the interrupts so always the interrupts once the interrupts are occurred immediately the interrupt handler will handle all those in interrupts and again it will start executing the current execution of instruction and it will fetch the next instruction right so hope you understood this uh, interrupts concept right we have seen the instruction cycle without interrupts and instruction cycle with interrupts right so i will stop here and uh, hope you enjoyed the session if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much